ठीक है बहुत सो थैंक यू वेरी मच सुशांत for all the sessions which you have been doing for the public and it's going it's it's really useful and good to see that you are being covered in et health and a uh, lot of other lot of other media uh, opportunities are happening for you so how are you feeling at the moment and i would also like to hear from you what is going to be the discussion today around which you know we are going to spend time for the audience okay so thank you sir for for this a uh, great morning talk so it's you know uh, what i feel about whether it is et now biospectrum uh, we have been talking to biospectrum also then uh, a couple of awards which have come to our uh, kitty right like uh, i recently got the uh, ceo of the year for autoimmunity research right uh, we have yeah. been awarded uh, you know chronic illness uh, prevention company uh, rnd prevention company two times in a row right uh, then we uh, we went for this cnbc awards right uh, last right. month where we we were awarded the microbial therapeutics company of the year for 2023 right so, so these all are uh, testimony of you know our uh, contribution to healthcare to the ai in healthcare uh, for the benefit of humanity right that's so that's what we feel you know uh, the the as far as healthcare sector is concerned the the obviously the uh, key parameter should be how many lives we have impacted that's that's what matters you know so uh, always money making and businesses and rois are all you know by product of how many lives you are changing right? so so that's that's our objective uh, to you know to understand what is going on inside our body and help people you know empower them to take back control of their health so that they they do not become ill or probably they stay away from all the chronic diseases and lead a healthy and you know healthy life and you know have have a longevity better longevity right so so it involves maybe educating people demystifying certain myths around it you know maybe educating them so that they they can ask the right questions if they are going for any of the you know uh, healthcare services apart from apart from obviously us what we do right uh, so so that's that's a whole objective behind it you know yeah very nice so uh, coming quickly to the gum and dental health that is the discussion today mm -hmm. and i was just reading that there are billions of bacteria which are there in our oral cavity in our mouth mm -hmm. and you know almost 700 different species of bacteria are existing there with you know almost neutral ph and in addition to bacteria there are other microorganisms as well so with so much of diverse micro uh, flora there then how does this whole uh, you know uh, gum problems and periodontitis you know sorry you know uh, if i'm spelling it wrong mm. uh, but it, how does this happen you know with this kind of uh, 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 environment inside oral cavity okay so uh, so let's let's uh, go back to last session what we discussed right uh, because this is always the extension of the previous session right as you mentioned there are 100 billion microbes and 770 species so it is the second largest diverse and the most you know largest ecosystem our after the gut microbiome right and again a lot of people do not understand this but you know the microbes living in our mouth and their interaction with our gut microbiome as well as other body organs impacts the systemic health and inflammation so i systemic health means every single you know uh, portion of our health and wellness right so right from uh, heart diseases to metabolic issues to mental health issues to digestive issues to even autoimmune conditions right these bacteria do have a say in or uh, in development of all these diseases right so as you mentioned you know right. ph level is is so is the most important thing so when we talk of the mouth ph level or saliva ph level right it has to be less uh, acidic right it has to be neutral it doesn't have to be more alkaline also right and again uh, right. we know so there so let me uh, you know uh, share something about the mucosal lining because we have a gut lining we have a mucosal lining mucosal membrane in the mouth we have the gut lining the in the gut so obviously both have have a role to play they so mucosal lining protects the mouth from pathogens you know from allowing the wrong things to enter into the blood stream right and it also has a, play, a role to play in lot of biological processes inside the mouth right uh similarly right. gut lining is also the same it it so again we know you know a lot of bacteria living in the gut right uh 
uh, there there is very less oxygen there, right? So so uh, gut lining makes sure that the oxygen move out of that place to other body organs, right? Similarly, the the mucosal lining in the mouth makes sure that you know the the, the teeth is the most strongest part in our in our body, and you know it makes sure that. Uh, the teeth, there's no tooth decay or there's no harmful pathogenic activities in the back the tooth enamel and dentin and, you know, which cause cavities and tooth decays, right? So it has, and again, the thickness of the mucosal lining with vis vis gut lining is very, very, uh, is much, much thicker than, than that of gut lining, right? Because there is mucosal lining, there is saliva, there are immunoglobins in the saliva. So there's a lot of, you know, barriers to entry, for the pathogen to enter the bloodstream or the bad things to enter, you know, uh, inside the body to fil filter the, the bad things, you know. Uh, so, uh, again, if, if there are a lot of, uh, you know, overactive immune responses, again, the microbes produces uh, compounds which triggers immune responses, which can lead to leaky mouth and which can obviously lead to systemic inflammation disease. This is what we discussed last time, right? So, we'll, we'll time, yeah. extend well, this, well, right, well. And, and what is actually oral health, right? So uh, we will divide the discussion into three parts. One is the bad breath, right? So we always, when when people say, "Oh, you have a bad breath," you know, "Aapke muse smell aari," and and you know, there are a lot of these things or or dental health, the cavities, the tooth decays, the root canal, right? Uh, these are uh, uh, and again, these are all linked to consumption of a lot of sugar, right? Sugary foods, right. And, and we'll discuss in detail how it happens. And third is the gum health, you know. So we have. Uh, the the uh, bacteria living above and below the gum lining on the mucosal lining and then you know imbalance in the oral microbiome is what causes gingivitis and periodontal disease right periodontitis which you mentioned right so again uh, right. again these these diseases open up the gateway for a lot of other systemic inflammation like cardiovascular diseases diabetes even cancer right so so again um, health starts from mouth even digestive tube which we say is is actually starts from the mouth right not from the stomach or not from the small intestine right so uh, so the so that's that's you know so when we talk of bad breath right so we have unpleasant odors right what what happens is uh when we consume a lot of so they, we will think uh, talk about three things here one is you know we i think we discussed sir about uh the h2s production in case of gut microbiome right it's the similar sulfides exactly. right? right correct so the foods high in sulfide yeah yeah yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah. Right. So, so again, we know sulfides, it's US is, is linked to a lot of IBS issues and IBD issues like diarrhea, like ulcerative colitis, right? Uh, so, a lot of foods which are high in sulfur, like eggs, like shrimp, cruciferous vegetables, right? If we have certain yeah. microbes, probably if our microbiome, oral microbiome is imbalanced, these bacteria will start, you know, uh, or maybe, you know, if we are feeding those of sulfate reducing microbes, these bacteria start you know, pre-digesting these foods and convert into, you know, sulfurous compounds like hydrogen sulfides, uh, methyl mercaptan and, and all of this, which causes bad odor, right? So it's, so if you have a sulfur in the breath, it actually tells something bad is going on, right? So it it can be a starting point of uh, even gingivitis and to decays because, you know, you have, when you're feeding them, the, these oral microbes are actually growing, right? They, the pathogenic activities are growing. So that's, that's one of the bad things, right? Again, similarly, polyamines, right? We know we know cheese, selfish, soy, citrus foods, even a lot of pulses have polyamines, right? So again, certain mm -hmm. microbes can produce, you know, polyamines uh, such as putrestine, catavine, spermine, spidermine. And we know putrestine is one of these things which is also connected with uh, development of colon cancer, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. And, and then again, if you have dry mouth, you know, if you take a lot of sugar, right? Uh, or you're not taking... Or, or probably, you know, you're taking a lot of citrus foods or you're not taking enough, uh, not enough hydrated, or I would say, you know, uh, probably smoking, you know, which causes dry mouth, right? Uh, or there's not much mucin production because of, you know, microbial degradation of mucin that we'll discuss in the next slide, right? So they are bad oral hygiene, like, you know, um, continue taking wrong toothpaste, you know, toothpaste, uh, having a lot of artificial sweeteners and mouth mouthwashes having a lot of artificial sweeteners that can actually trigger, you know, a lot of these bad bad breaths and which is again a starting point of that's an indication that something go wrong is going on, right? So we don't yeah, have yeah. to be take bad breath very lightly, right? Yeah. So 
so that's yeah yes, so bad, bad breath is all about you know the uh, wrong metabolism which is happening due to you know yeah. uh, wrong choices of food sulfides polyamines and the uh, you know dry mouth smoking and so this is going to be very useful for everyone and this is also an indication that you know the thing is going in the wrong way so let's move to, on to the next okay. slide and and also i just want to add here that if you think that taking mouth antiseptic mouth washes would clear your bad debts, you're wrong. Probably, you know, that yeah. will further exacerbate the situation that further cause further bad breath because all these mouthwashes have a lot of these artificial sweeteners and, you know, preservatives and additives, right? Yeah, yeah. Even they will kill the bacteria, you know, uh, uh, to some extent, which is, yeah. which is not ideal. Yeah, which is bad. Yeah. yeah. So now this is the most important part of dental health, right? And I'll probably also play a video after this discussion, what we have, right? So, uh, sure. so essentially what happens is, you know, uh, teeth are the most strong part. If you see the structure of the teeth, we have enamel, we have dentin, and then we have, you know, nerve tissues and everything inside the teeth, right? So when we are consuming a lot of sugar, people say don't eat sugar. So what happens is, you know, it's not sugar which causes cavities. It's actually what happens is these microbes which consume a lot of sugar, they convert the sugar into, you know, various acids like lactic acid, you know, succinic acid and all that, which, which makes, so it's more acidic. It makes your peace level more acidic, right? At least it further provides uh, opportunity for for the wrong microbes like S mutants, streptococcus mutants to grow and it promotes okay. cavities, right? So again, uh, these bugs, when they start growing, they start producing biofilms. Now, biofilms is something, it's like, consider it's like a cave, right? Uh, so there are a lot of these bacteria, commensal and pathogen live together. And, you know, just to survive, they will start cooperating with each other, right? They will start sharing DNA and they will, for their survival, they'll, they'll probably give nutrients also to each one of us, right? So that's, they start growing. And then again, you know, when, when this helps, so... This happens, so this also lead to the lung plaque, right? We, we we see the plaques inside the inside the mouth, right? Uh, yeah. These plaques are like a like sticky thing, right? So a lot of these bacteria will start sticking there, and then they will further grow, right? So it's like a bacteria yeah. party, right? So it's it's yeah. like it's, it's, they will keep on growing, they will keep on you know asking more sugar, you will keep on feeding more sugar, right? And they will mm -hmm. start being plague, and this is something, and and one more important thing is right. These as so you know enamel we they are minerals and compounds on the teeth right so the more mm. minerals positive there it is better so what they do is they these acids can break down the enamel right so I'll show mm. you which will which will explain in detail so break down enamel and extract oh. the compounds right and then penetrate yeah. to dentin right so when when further penetrates it start you start having pain in your teeth and and you know all these uh, dental issues which is actually linked to and which, which may require teeth removal. Right, so you have to, to 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 take you go to doctor and doctor say let's do root canal, let's remove your teeth, right? So that's that's mm -hmm. all because of sugary stuff you have been eating, you have been feeding your microbiome, right? And okay. again, um, this plague is something which triggers immune response. So immune cells start doing a biological warfare, and right? they start mm -hmm. attacking to kill these harmful bugs. And in terms of what happens is it's overactive. So these things, this bad, this impact or this inflammation start impacting your tooth, your gums, and then you have periodontitis and, and you know, yeah, gingivitis and, and periodontal diseases, right? So that's, that's linked to gum disease, which will, so probably let me play this, uh, you know, just a second, let me play this video. Yeah, sure. Um, just a When a team of archaeologists recently came across some 15,000-year-old human remains, they made an interesting discovery. The teeth of those ancient humans were riddled with holes. Their cavities were caused by the same thing that still plagues us today, specific tiny microbes that live in our mouths. These microbes are with us soon after birth. We typically pick them up as babies from our mother's mouths. And as our teeth erupt, they naturally begin to accumulate communities of bacteria. Depending on what we eat, and specifically how much sugar we consume, certain microbes can overpopulate and cause cavities. Diets high in sugary foods cause an explosion of bacteria called mutans streptococci in our mouths. Like humans, these microorganisms love sugar, using it as a molecular building block and energy source. 
As they consume it, the bacteria generate byproducts in the form of acids, such as lactic acid. The mutans streptococci are resistant to this acid, but unfortunately, our teeth aren't. While each human tooth is coated in a hardy, protective layer of enamel, it's no match for acid. That degrades the armor over time, leaching away its calcium minerals. Gradually, acid wears down a pathway for bacteria into the tooth's secondary layer called the dentin. Since blood vessels and nerves in our teeth are enclosed deep within, at this stage, the expanding cavity doesn't hurt. But if the damage extends beyond the dentin, the bacterial invasion progresses, causing excruciating pain as the nerves become exposed. Without treatment, the whole tooth may become infected and require removal, all due to those sugar-loving bacteria. The more sugar our food contains, the more our teeth are put at risk. Those cavemen would hardly have indulged in sugary treats, however. So what caused their cavities? In meat-heavy diets, there would have been a low risk of cavities developing because lean meat contains very little sugar. But that's not all our early human ancestors ate. Cavemen would also have consumed root vegetables, nuts, and grains, all of which contain carbohydrates. When exposed to enzymes in the saliva, carbohydrates get broken down into simpler sugars, which can become the fodder for those ravenous mouth bacteria. So while ancient humans did eat less sugar compared to us, their teeth were still exposed to sugars. That doesn't mean they were unable to treat their cavities, though. Archaeological remains show that about 14,000 years ago, humans were already using sharpened flint to remove bits of rotten teeth. Ancient humans even made rudimentary drills to smooth out the rough holes left behind and beeswax to plug cavities, like modern-day fillings. Today, we have much more sophisticated techniques and tools, which is fortunate because we also need to contend with our more damaging, sugar-guzzling ways. After the Industrial Revolution, the human incidence of cavities surged because suddenly we had technological advances that made refined sugar cheaper and accessible. Today, an incredible 92% of American adults have had cavities in their teeth. Some people are more susceptible to cavities due to genes that may cause certain weaknesses, like softer enamel. But for most, high sugar consumption is to blame. However, we have developed other ways of minimizing cavities besides reducing our intake of sugar and starch. In most toothpastes and many water supplies, we use tiny amounts of fluoride. That strengthens teeth and encourages the growth of enamel crystals that build up a tooth's defenses against acid. When cavities do develop, we use tooth fillings to fill and close off the infected area, preventing them from getting worse. The best way to avoid a cavity is still cutting down on sugar intake and practicing good oral hygiene to get rid of the bacteria and their food sources. That includes regular toothbrushing, flossing, and avoiding sugary, starchy, and sticky foods that cling to your teeth between meals. Gradually, the population of sugar-loving microbes in your mouth will decline. Unlike the cavemen of yesteryear, today we have the knowledge required to avert a cavity calamity. We just need to use it. Excellent. I think this is going to be very useful for the audience, uh, for everyone. The only thing here, Ms. is that what we have done is now. So obviously we need good, you know, toothbrushes. It's, it should not be harsh. It should be a bit soft. Then we need toothpaste, toothpaste right? Again, toothpaste should be, as mentioned, should have fluoride, right? And then, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the tongue scrapping and flossing and all these things. But the problem is, which I'll discuss in the next subsequent slide, is that all these toothpaste and mouthwashes now have a lot of artificial sweeteners. And they yeah. are known to cause diabetes, you know, endocrine disruption, you know, uh, make dry mouth, further trigger cavities and periodontal disease, right? So we will... Let us discuss that as well, right? Um, right. So, so here is what we were discussing: gingivitis and periodontal disease, right? So, so we know this mucosal lining, as we discussed initially, that right? mucosal or mucin lining is something which protects our muco, you know, which is which is actually you know uh, a barrier which protects, you know, which actually helps us protect our entire mouth, right? 
and now yeah. there are a couple of things like you know this this mu mucin is required for maintaining your ph level for preventing the pathogens to grow but let on certain microbes which actually feed on this mucin so they start eating mucin right and then mm. the mucin level is low and then it 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 changes your ph level changes your acidic level and it, it provides more opportunity for the pathogens to grow and start doing wrong activities right similarly when yeah. when they, so so essentially some of these microbes which actually eat mucin produces fucose and sialic acid right and the you know this i, I probably share this that well the the yeah. uh, the glycemic prediction model which we are launching later this month right so we have one of the factor which i'm currently opening but probably a lot of people don't know even a lot of uh, you know health tech companies focusing on reversing diabetes do not know that fucose is one of the sugar mo molecule which are will produced by your oral microbe right uh, when you mm -hmm. when they are so there's certain microbes which which consume this mucin and this fucose is found found on a gut lining so people who uh, are in ketosis or who are in calorie restriction diet or who are intermittent fasting a lot of these things so their bacteria are hungry that they start go to gut lining and start eating this fucose right and it it spikes yeah. your sugar level it even leads to leaky gut situation right so it's it's oh. not all if you if you are into you know, calorie in, calorie out thing, it may further spike your blood sugar level because of this fucose. Similarly, sialic acid, we know it it makes your this thing acidic, right? So again, yeah. if you're consuming a lot of sugar, low protein, it means I don't need high protein, but you need your body needs some certain proteins, right? Certain essential amino acids. High citrus foods, right. it, which again makes your environment acidic and, you know, uh, reduces the mucin production, right? Dry mouth and everything. So uh, it right. gives a risk of cavities, right? And again, you know, uh, biofilm, as I we, we discussed, if you are if you are not consuming a lot of polyphenols and antioxidants, again, a lot of these antioxidants are metabolized by your microbiome, right? So if you're not consuming them or you're you are very low on, on curd and yogurt and a lot of these probiotics, which are essential, right? Again, you need to determine what probiotic you need in what quantity, right? That can so probiotic here, I don't mean the probiotic capsule, I mean the fermented foods which so probably it should have been fermented food, well, my bad, I write probiotics, but fermented foods like like kimchi and, you know, uh, or probably yogurt, right? Mostly yogurt, right? If you're consuming yogurt, it, it prevents the biofilm formation. It, it maintains the less acidic environment, right? And again, yeah. uh, certain pro-inflammatory activities like we discussed about LPS, which is one of the endotoxin for diabetes and cardiovascular disease. So LPS is also produced by the oral microbiome, right? So PG2 yeah. is, is is one of these one of these bacteria which produces LPS and other virulence vir factor, right, which yeah. over-regulates our immune system and, and leads to various oral diseases, and which doesn't stop here. So, you know, a lot of people who have digestive issues have dry mouth or coated tongue, yeah. right, or people yeah. who have gingivitis or periodontal disease or cavities and tooth decay have a higher risk of diabetes, arthritis, IBD, you know, even cancerous situations, right, uh, heart diseases, right. So, so essentially what happens is when this is happening too much so gingivitis you know because of this these immune system start attacking and there's a lot of sorghums and bleeding gums and from this you know these bacteria move to other places inside the body including the including the heart and and you know arteries and this plague development which which causes heart diseases right so that's that's how yeah. disconnected right wow. amazing yeah so, amazing so this, this this is something you know uh would be surprising for a lot of people. So we, what is the, so what is the criteria we see when we when we buy a toothpaste? You know, we much? look at flavor. We look at you know how 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 fresh you feel, but actually that's wrong. And this is what I think we should discuss. Correct. Yeah. So so you go and buy any toothpaste. Look at these ingredients: SLS sodium lauryl sulfate, which is an you know if you are brushing the teeth and you are feeling that feeling that. You know, thanda and the icy cold, right? So, so that is there's nothing but SLS. So you have foamy and icy thing. It's SLS. So it's SLS. What does it? It's types of the mucosal protective layer, right? And and you know, it changes your acidic level, which is again, you know, uh, one of the uh, you know, uh, dry it creates dry mouth. One of the reason why we have breeding ground for harmful pathogens, right? And and then right. you know, it it is also referred as endocrine disruptor, so it can imbalance your hormones. Yeah. Again, triclosan is is known is is a known endocrine disruptor, right? Uh, so yeah. it also you know crosses your across stomach and reaches your 
gastrointestinal tract where mm -hmm. it can reduce the diversity of gut and oral microbiome, which again we know is is linked to a lot of systemic inflammation, right? Or maybe a lot of issues such as low nutrient absorption, you know, food intolerances, food allergies, right? Uh, aspartam we discussed uh, yesterday is my video discovered or her. aspartam is connected with your cancer with diabetes right uh, with with blood poisoning and a lot of these things right so again it aspartam yeah. is known to decrease microbial diversity similarly saccharin similarly saccharin is similar to aspartam right uh, then you know propyne glycol which is again uh, it absorbs the moisture from the mouth so it leads to dry mouth and then cavities you know dry mouth is linked to cavities gum disease right so we have to be focused on flossing and tongue strapping, you know, buying the right uh, toothpaste, which is which has fluoride, right? It doesn't have any of these ingredients. So both for toothpaste and mouthwashes, right? So this is this is really, really important. Please all see all these for everyone who's, you know, listening to this or maybe watching our video, right? Please uh, look out for labels and look out for these uh, artificial things in the toothpaste if it is please please do please avoid you know taking all these uh you know wrong things uh is going to you know uh, i think at point. some yes uh, at some point you know uh gene fertilizers should actually come out with you know uh, a nice toothpaste you know which is good for the teeth and oral cavity yeah that, uh, that's that's a plan yeah and because we are thinking of oral probiotics we're thinking of a prebiotic uh, toothpaste. So, for instance, yeah. you know, if I'll just open up a few things, for instance, a lot of people do not know that oral microbiome okay, mm. uh, can regulate your blood sugar level. Oh, yeah. That's a surprise uh, element, you know. Nobody knew about uh, this very clearly. Earlier. Right, because the nitric, the, the, the nitrate, what is the beets and greens fruits which we consume, right? So nitrate is considered yeah. nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is said to uh, improve your insulin sensitivity, right? And it is also said to, uh, you know, open up your or, or you know, relax your blood vessels, which is again, regulate your blood sugar level, right? So so if you if your body is not producing, if your tooth, my oral microbe is not producing too much of nitric oxide, probably, you know, uh, that is something uh, our toothpaste, which has a nitrate, can can help, right? So that's just just an indication of what we can build in future, right? Uh, okay. So again, as as you mentioned about the gut microbiome, the the, the food and the gut microbiome interaction. Similarly, there's a food and uh, you know oral microbiome interaction. So uh, nutrition can up regulate down regulate microbial activity. So all these four things which we have discussed will be actually making these scores like gum health score like cavity score uh, you know periodontal score dental health right uh, bad breath assessment all these would drive your nutrition interventions right so the all the nutrition interventions what we see we see that you know the factors which has to be considered is oral ph level what metabolites are being produced like nitric oxide lps polyamine sulfides right microbial activity is the immune system response the communication with the oral microbiome right so that's that's a typical of uh, how we look at nutrition. Unlike a lot of companies which just see protein, carbs, fats, and just you know just measure calories, we we that's all you know that's all bullshit to to in my opinion, right? So we see the food ontology. We see food is in combination of multiple molecules, right? We see we we study each of these molecular ingredients, right? And the scientific literature and uh, you know and evidence behind it, right? Then we. These biological pathways which we determine would be driving the measurement of each of these molecular ingredients, right? And then even supplements okay. also, if, if there's a lot of inflammation which is causing, you know, nutrient vitamin deficiency, so we can look at supplements, ontology. Right? Then there are our machine learning model, which again maps the, the pathway with the nutritional ingredients to determine the right set of nutrition choices, right? So so that's that's how, so, you know, we, if someone asks me what, what we should eat, I really can't comment because nobody can actually tell you what you should eat, what you should not, right? Because a lot of the problem is, you know, uh, everyone says we know what you should eat, but nobody knows because you have, nobody knows what is going on inside your body, right? Yeah. So so again, uh, for from from uh, oral micro research, general recommendation could be eat a lot of polyphenols, antioxidants, herbs, right? Uh, yeah. Beets, greens, right? 
uh, green tea, a lot of these stuff, which is again, I'm saying generalized, it may or may not. So again, it also depends upon what your gut microbiome are also doing. So there's, there has to be a marriage between gut and oral microbiome, right? So, so essentially, yeah. these are a few things. Avoid as much sugar as you can, right? Yeah. Uh, avoid artificial sweeteners, right? Look at your toothpaste, look at it, your mouthwashes, right? Uh, yeah. And and the, the biggest thing is if you have something bad going on in your mouth, mouth, you know, you won't you won't you know get it because there's no pain until unless it has reached a level where you have to decay and you start having tooth pain and you go to you go for root canal to doctor, right? So, right. so essentially, that's that's our biggest problem here, right? Uh, so, uh, sir, any questions on this? Probably we'll be discussing the next two sessions on the how the oral macular sclerosis, diabetes, and heart disease, and the Alzheimer's. But we'll we'll be I can discuss a bit. We have uh, around five minutes. We can discuss a bit about it. So, I think you know this is one area. Uh, there are a lot of conceptions and a lot of misconceptions and good that, you know, you are bringing it forward, you know, in terms of, uh, because a lot of people have bad breath, a lot of people have other issues because of oral microbiome. Uh, uh, there are a lot of products in the market, you know, which can really harm everything, you know, inside. Uh, you talked about the toothpaste, you talk about the mouthwash. So, so this is actually something uh, very, very useful for each and every person inhabiting this earth, I would say. Mm. And I would strongly encourage, you know, uh, we should be doing more of these talks, you know, uh, uh, through dental associations, uh, discuss with the doctors, uh, discuss with the patients. Uh, I think this is going to be very useful. So I don't have questions, but what I have seen is, you know, uh, the way we are developing, a lot of people uh, should be able to watch this particular information which we are creating after doing uh, research through uh, papers, research papers, and a lot of uh, work which is Gene Fitletics is doing currently uh, should reach to the audience. That's what is my thought process at the moment. So, we, so just just to sign off before I'll say, so we are launching our oral microbiome product which is called o o Ora Hike, right? So. Yeah. Uh, so essentially, we'll be decoding the functions of your oral microbiome, uh, converting them into various pathways. We'll tell your gum health, your dental health, your bad breath, your right. immune responses, your your risk of cavities, risk of gingivitis, periodontal disease, and even even the connection between the oral microbiome and heart disease, diabetes, even cancer. Right. So so we'll be and then giving you nutrition choices. Even we can give you some certain sort of guidelines for your dentist to actually you know. So it will be a very, very different product where we'll be giving a diet guidelines for a dentist also what they should cover because a lot of dentist community also lacks a lot of information about the mm -hmm. macro right? So that is something what we, we are doing a webinar on 19th of July. So anyone who wants to be part of this, we'll be discussing about the gut macro with the oral macro our supplements. We'll be also uh, launch, you know, doing a soft launch of our, uh, you know, glycemic response prediction model. So probably, you know, you don't need a, a CGM machine now to monitor your blood sugar level, right? So we can look at your microbiome profile and tell you whether your food is going to spike blood sugar level or not, even before you consume, it, right? So you don't need to do a guesswork, right? So that will be additional thing, uh, a free for every customer who is signing up either for a gut, vaginal or oral microbiome test, right? Uh, so that will be that there will be no charge for that will be additional bonus for all the all our customers, right? Even the existing customers, can get a heck of you know their their glycemic response uh, right to different foods so uh, so i think there's things we are doing fabulous work i think uh, let's keep it up and let's also roll out the products which will be useful for the overall audience uh, uh, for a lot of people so that's my take and i'm ex excitingly uh, looking forward to the next talk which we have uh, this month yeah and and you know uh so we have and so those people who want to be associated with us probably who think they want to benefit the people they want to benefit the mankind to help people welcome this we have a specific you know affiliate program where we uh you know we any any affiliate goes to the entire course module to understand the microbiome so there's a lot of education required and then probably we work with them to to actually help people improve their health, right? So anyone yeah. wants to be part of it, you know, do reach out to us, right? Even any diagnostic centers want to be part of, want to 
list our test on their on their bouquet of products or maybe collaborate with us. You know, please feel free to reach out to us, right? You know our website, right? It's www.genefitletics.com, right? Yeah. So feel free sure. to reach out to us, right? Uh, we'll be happy to help. Yeah. Thank you very much. Let's keep doing this more often. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye, Sean.